going on YouTube, Curtis Seven here for the review of Manchester United versus Arsenal in the quarter final of the FA Cup, which Arsenal got up uh, 2 1, and Danny Wilbeck, the ex Manchester United player, knocked United out the FA Cup. And I can't believe I'm even saying these words, Danny Wilbeck. Who I got a Danny Wilbeck top in my cupboard, a current Man United top I might add this season. But yes, anyways, lads, as you can see, I'm disappointed. But in all seriousness, this isn't going to be that much of a review of the game. I want to talk about the state of United in general. But quickly about the game, Monreal opened up the scoring for Arsenal in the first half with a lovely bit of uh, dribbling skill from uh, Oxlade Chamberlain. Uh, mate, he did well to get past three or four players and terrible, terrible defending. Monreal uh, couldn't really miss from there with his left foot. Day, I couldn't do too much about that one. But literally, a couple minutes later, uh, um, Angel Di Maria whips in a beautiful ball to Wayne Rooney, heads it in the goal. Mate, what a finish that was. Chesney couldn't do nothing about that. He had no hope. Beautiful cross, beautiful header, perfect goal. We're going to half-time level, and I'm thinking, right, we're going to come out in the second half. You know, we, we th th that first half was positive for me. Com considering how we have been playing the last few games, or the last few months, uh, you know, we came out, we, we played well that first half. We played well. Um, second half came out, and we just didn't, just didn't go for it. You know, we're just like, we're just happy to pass the ball and mope around as we normally do. And then the crucial mistake from Antonio Valencia, who, in my opinion, was United's best player for this game, makes a terrible mistake where you can't make a mistake. Danny Wilberg, toe pokes it around the hay, open goal, couldn't miss that. 2-1, game set, match. But uh, just before that, Angel Di Maria got a red card, got booked uh, a yellow card for diving, and then uh, grabbed the referee, uh, you can't touch the referees, mate, and uh, hit him off, uh, sent him off. But in saying that, um, I'm sick of players, uh, people saying, oh, you know, um, that same referee, Joe Hart, uh, headbutt him and he got nothing. Well, mate, that's a different incident. That's for a different time, you know? You can't be grabbing the referee the way Angel Di Maria, uh, the, the way Di Maria did. That's a, that's a red card every day of the week. I've got no complaints about that. Simulation, um, about Di Maria, that, he grabbed his wrist and that was a foul. For me, foul every day of the week, but there is no need for you and how to be diving on the floor. How do you fall over when someone grabs your wrist? Why? How does that make you trip up your feet? I don't know. Does my head in. Simulation, two seconds later, uh, Yanazai, who running into the box, had a bit of contact, I might add, outside the box, takes three or four steps forwards, and then falls over when he's in the box. No, mate, get up. No chance. And I, and I hate diving, I'm against it, you know, but when it's happening at your own club, it's sad to see. And it's, Nothing that you're proud of, and I'm totally against it. So I'm glad they both got booked for diving. Di Maria, <sighs> he just looks unsettled. He looks unsettled. Uh, Louis Van Hal did say that we're not going to see the best of him till next season, you know, but, you know, he's the most expensive Premier League uh, player in history, you know, so. I can see a player comes unsettled. I know that. Coming from Real Madrid, the best team in the world. You know, he won the, um, he's, had a, he's had a real eventful year. Think about it. And uh, Di Maria, Champions League final, best player of the game, won the Champions League. Played in the World Cup final, unfortunately got a loss there. Then he's the, you know, the biggest transfer in history in the Premier League, comes to United. Comes to United, has his house burgled for his family and while he was home, you know, so that could be, that could have shaken him up too. Apparently he's struggling really, really bad with English. He's just really, really unsettled. I'm not saying he's going to leave, but, you know, <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's crossed his mind about leaving United and just going to PSG, get paid millions, millions more, and having a much easier time at PSG. But I hope that's not the case. I hope he sticks it out. I hope he, I hope he fights it out because he's a quality player. Just we're not seeing that at the minute, which is such a shame. But I knew that when we signed him. If you check my video ages ago about Angel Di Maria, I said he's not worth the money and he's inconsistent. This is what we're going to get. I got laughed at. People looked at me like an idiot, but that's what I said. You know, but anyways, let's get on to... Um, I want to talk about Daily Blind for a second. Daily Blind is getting heavily, heavily criticised. And for me, Daily Blind, for me, is the... I tweeted this out, is the 
midfield version of Dimitar Berbatov. Daily Blin is uh, his quality on the ball. He's class. He can just the way he's got the ball at his feet, mate. He is quality. But when he hasn't got the ball, my word, mate. Lazy as lazy, lazy can be. He's slow, which doesn't help. Doesn't run back, but you know when he's got the ball, he's quality. So what do you do when you have someone like that in your side? Well, you've got to get someone to pair up with him who can work ten times faster, you know, and ten times harder. And that is what uh, Ander Herrera does. And when he got subbed off at halftime for Michael Carrick, I knew Michael Carrick wasn't going to run around and chase like Ander Herrera does. So I knew leaving um, Carrick and uh, Daily Blind was going to expose us, but. What do you do? So I, I, I kind of feel for Daily Blind because it's not all his fault. There's no movement around him. There's no one to pass to forward. He's got to hold the ball longer. There's no options. We don't work hard off the ball with United. It's not just this game. I'm talking about games for the last few months. We just do not work hard off the ball. But in saying that, Louis Van Hal, mate. We knocked out Capital One Cup from MK Dons. We knocked out the FA Cup. Uh, FA Cup from Arsenal. Uh, we're sitting fourth in the Premier League with all the teams around us hitting form with 10 games to go and we are at the worst form in our whole season. It's not looking too good, Louis. I know my philosophy, me philosophy, I don't know, it's a bad accent, <laughs> I can't copy it, but your philosophy, mate. You said it's going to take three months. You said, oh, that was immature, oh, longer, longer. We are 10 games to go. We're in March. We're halfway through March, mate. And tell you what, the reason why I'm bringing this up because if this was David Moyes, my word, Moyes would have been sacked already, already. And I just think it's unfair how Moyes copped all this criticism. For some reason, Louis Van Gaal is getting away with it. And Louis Van Gaal, it's because is it because he had the Great World Cup? Because at Bayern Munich he wasn't that great, you know. At Barcelona he wasn't that great, you know. He did things with Ajax, but that was 20 years ago. Why is Louis Van Gaal getting away with this? It's got to be the World Cup. It has got to be the World Cup. But I want to know from you guys, lads, if Louis Van Gaal, uh, Louis Van Gaal does not get fourth spot, should he be sacked? Get your comments down below. I'm not a happy camper. Ten games to go. We've got to work harder. I, honestly, lads, I can't see us finishing top four. Can't see it. Liverpool are much better form. They're below us. Tottenham are in much better form. We're playing them next week. You know, they could beat us at Old Trafford. And if that was to happen, that for me, that would confirm we're not going to make top four. But we've got, you know, Arsenal again. We've got City. We've got uh, Chelsea. And we've got Everton away. C can I? Nah. I really cannot see how we are going to get... Uh, top four with those games coming up considering the way we are playing against these lesser teams. I just I just can't see it happening Get your comments down below. Will we get fourth spot? Will Louis Van Gaal uh, get the sack if he doesn't get fourth spot? I'm interested to know. But anyways lads, I'm your boy Curtis7. Take care. Boots.